you were working on um, more than one level at, at the same time, and you had, in fact, um, at least four different outcomes you were going for. So I think, yes. So let's start off identifying those four outcomes and then uh, getting more and more specific about um, what it was that let you know to go to those outcomes and how, in fact, you accomplished them. Okay. Okay? The first outcome that Leslie was going for, um, perhaps a meta outcome in this case, was to install feelings of strong self-worth in Hazel. The second outcome was to install a generative sequence in Hazel and attach it to all of those contexts, all of those situations in Hazel's life, like being at a party, like hearing her husband telling her about his day, where previously jealousy would occur. And attach a sequence to those contexts, not doing away with jealousy, but counting on jealousy being there, and instead chaining other states and behaviors to that, taking her from jealous and being able to appreciate that as a warning to remembering and being reassured that she has made him feel more loved than anyone else, too confident in the future that she will be able to do that again. The third outcome was installing a strategy at that point in that generative sequence that I just described, which is necessary as a choice point. So when you got to the point where you were giving her more sensory experience, she was making more discriminations in the present, she didn't have a strategy prior to your session of knowing how to make the determination whether it was appropriate to be jealous or not. And at that point, you installed a strategy that allowed her to make discriminations and most importantly, um, or certainly importantly, to change the way, what she was paying attention to change it from paying attention to the woman and yes. is this a threat to how rude her husband was feeling on the inside which was a, made a big change then well sure made a big and since in the beginning she was it was simply woman um, it was needed anything about the qualities of the interaction but uh, yes all most importantly his response right. what's going on inside of him right. now the fourth outcome that Leslie was going for was an outcome that had to do with maintaining and enhancing their relationship, going beyond the piece of work just for Hazel and how she was feeling and applying the process that was going on to their relationship as a whole. Oh yes, I wouldn't pass that up. <laughs> You'd never pass that no, up. No, I would never pass that up. So, let's take one outcome, the first outcome that you were going for, and uh, which was installing a sense of self-worth Yes. And thank you. Yes, actually, uh, there's a point I'd like to make about yeah. that. While that's certainly my outcome, in the very beginning, I was gathering information about um, the strength, so to speak, of her self concept, of her self worth. And what I discovered is what made that uh, very uh, primary outcome to go for in this piece of work. First thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to tell me about some things about yourself that you are really pleased with, that you feel proud of, that you appreciate. <laughs> um, well, uh, well, uh, <laughs> when you asked her to come up with things that, that she, she appreciated, appreciated about, about herself, herself, she had a hard time doing that. And what yes. she could come up to was she was a good kid to be with. And um, when she has, as her own concept of self, only those pieces, that she's fun, that she can joke, that she might be uh, attractive, then if that's all that she has, then anyone else who has those things. Sure. And when I asked her um, about how did she get him to fall in love with her, when she said, well, I just think he's neat, it's like she didn't have her experience, her memories were not uh, um, categorized. She didn't have available access to how powerful she is in her relationship with him. And she had nothing about the uh, special uh, effect and impact she had on him in creating that, that response in him. No, in fact, if there's something I would like uh, to have the opportunity to do or check on with Hazel in the future, would certainly be 
how much that has generalized in her experience. Whether or not she is noticing, detecting the effect, the impact that she has on a lot of the people in her life. Now, at that point in the interaction, when she has difficulty accessing... This was not an overconfident, smug woman. Right. Um, certainly this was a piece that let me know in terms of whether it was a problem of possessiveness or, as I said before, self-worth, self-concept, that she might be interchangeable. That led me to take another step in that direction. Four or five minutes later, in the information gathering process, you came upon another thing again that, that lets you know something about the self-worth and what had to be done. It's very difficult to be forgiving. To yourself? Well, why is <laughs> Forgiving about what? Well, just even little mistakes. You know, it's, it's funny. It's um, this voice that I've been trying to remember to use. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't feel that way, but that's only like one little part. Okay, now wait, this voice, yeah. it, it doesn't really feel that way. It doesn't feel like... Well, it doesn't feel like I'm, uh, that I'm uh, not deserving of consideration and forgiveness. And, you know, it feels like, hey, you know, she's a good kid, as good as any client, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we can, we she's can, a person. Yeah, you know, we can uh, be there for her. And um, then other parts, I mean, just think, it's hopeless. <laughs> you know, kind of um, forget it. That's... Then you begin, you don't waste any time after that, you begin installing that sense of self-worth. And you do it, it's one of these... Well, I couldn't not. Right, and uh, it's one of the things that you start to do very covertly. And you, in, you are able to install that sense of self-worth merely by directing what she's paying attention to, that she may not have thought about before or thought about in the same way. And by asking her questions, at making statements, you allow her to access the information in a way that it seems to be just something that's naturally occurring in the conversation and not an intervention at all, and yet it's a very powerful intervention. Actually, yes. Asking questions is at least amongst the top three kinds of interventions there are in all the world. Because as you ask a question, you direct a person's experience. It's like if I ask you, um, how are you wonderful? <laughs> that, uh, that's a lot different than asking someone what's wrong or what do they feel bad about or that, that a question uh, directs a person's experience. And it does so in a covert way to the extent that all of a sudden they're surprised at their own experience. Now, can you imagine how that looks to your husband? Uh. Scene. How does seeing you do something a little awkward and boring, and how does it look to him? Well, he's pretty kind. But that's important because he's 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 much cooler about me than I am. You know, in the sense of it's fine. So yeah, he loves you. Yeah, <laughs> you fun it. <laughs> yeah, he so loves you what? even with the flubbing. But I didn't know ahead of time a hundred percent that that was going to be fine in the eyes of her husband. But I needed to know whether or not it would be. I needed to know whether or not Hazel's self-criticism was supported by her husband, or was it just hers? Because if he also was very critical of her, if he also held very perfectionistic type criteria by which he judged her behavior, then that was something else I was going to need to do something about. I could not go any further than that. I would need to protect her from criticism uh, from her husband, as well as from herself. So it, it was both, I, my hope certainly, was that um, she would look good to him, even when she was awkward. And that would let me know that, um, yeah, he was good to her. It would let me know that this self-criticism was hers, and I could continue to work with it just with her. And you continue to support that piece when later you um, tell her that, hey, he knows you in all of your seasons. Hmm. Again, presupposing when you've been awkward, when you've yes, been unpleasant, yes. when you've been angry, when you've been... Uh, well, I've never known anybody who... It's like an, uh, perhaps a, a more a generalization. 
but it seems important to people that if they're loved, in order to be secure in feeling loved, that they also believe that they're known. So it's not like waiting to be found out. Do you ever realize that in three years, it's like, this man knows you. He knows you in all your seasons, so to speak. He knows you when you're feeling poorly about yourself or about him. He's, I'm sure, by now faced your anger, all kinds of things, as well as your love and your passion and your sweetness and your kindness. He knows you and he loves you. Hazel is able to um, access that um, her husband loves her. And she knows this because he puts up with her. He's patient with her. And of course, this is not going to be good enough for her to have a strong sense of self-worth. So you pursue this further by asking her what else, what other ways does she know? Yeah, he tells her jokes. Right. And you keep going until you get something, more of a substance that she can have as a, as a strong basis for reassurance yes. in herself. So let's take another look at that sequence and how Leslie draws that out and leads gently Hazel to that place where Hazel is able to come up with that information on her own. He didn't have to get me to love him, but why I still love him uh, is um, uh, because, uh, well, he's real willing to go for it with me. So he's there with you. Yeah. And he's willing to go for it. Now, what, what do you mean by go for it with well, you? It's What's like, he willing to go for? It's like to go for making our life more terrific together, to uh, checking things out that aren't going perfectly and figuring out solutions and, and going, yeah, let's do that. And, and kind of that feeling of uh, just the fun of uh, making things more and more fun. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be perfect. No. And he's not afraid to look at what isn't all that you want it to be right. and to go about doing things. Right. And to talk about it and communicate about so it. So you're so important to him that he's willing to do that. Yeah. He would not risk losing you or letting it fall below a level of mutual enjoyment, satisfaction, pleasure. No. I don't and think he's so. not willing to do that. I don't think so. So you're that important to him. Yeah, I think so. It's not something that, you know, it's like doesn't have to worry about or think about or pay attention to or take for granted or... Yeah. He likes to do all those things, pay attention to. And, uh, yeah. 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 I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> like, right? I think, I think uh, that he was so delighted that someone found him so delightful and continues to. I find him more delightful all the time, really. So you bring out all that he is. You let him be more than he would be without you. I'm not sure about that. Oh, come on. When you go, mmm, and look at him, and he responds like that fully, it's like whatever you're responding to. That's the whole thing about being in a couple relationship. It's about detecting and responding to those parts of one another that make you more. More than you would be alone. Right. No, I can, yes. I can, so yeah. uh -huh. it really sounds yeah. like... While he is with you, right. and throughout that period, that's why does he want to be with you? Why does he want to stay with you? Why does he really care enough to take risks and to look at what's not right because he never wants to lose you? Is because he's more of who he wants to be with you. It's like being with you isn't a subtraction. It's not a compromise. It's an expansion. Yeah, I can see that. And you do that for him. Yeah, that's, that's easy. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> All the things you take for granted. <laughs> and you say he's with you because he's patient. <laughs> you know he loves you. So once you establish this um, new meaning for her, new way of her understanding her role and her impact on him, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that it was uh, in part because of her that he is all. Yes. that he is. Yes. This went a long ways now in cementing not only the feelings of self-worth, but undermining jealousy. Could I All the information that I was getting from her was that she had no sense of importance. It was as if she was irrelevant to him. And um, she didn't know 
See, I have the benefit of having seen so many couples where you know that they're making each other less than they can be, where they're taking away, they're subtracting from one another. And that her response to him, her, you, that hmm, as she would do, uh, as she showed you all, um, and her believing in him, her loving him, elicited in him his resources and allowed him to be more with her. I had no doubt about that whatsoever. And I wanted her very much to recognize that she was making a contribution to him. Knowing from, well, actually knowing from the first piece when she said that what she felt good about was her work with people. It let me know, and this is, I'm gonna say this very loosely, but it let me know that it was important to Hazel to be having an impact, to be making a contribution to others. And this was an opportunity for me to use that information and apply it towards their relationship and towards her importance in it, which would then give her more of a basis, again, for security, self-worth, and would um, undermine that jealousy. And again, later in the, the session, you asked her another question, which not only helped to cement uh, and reassure her of her self-worth, but also provided the basis for her reassurance in the generative sequence, which we were going to move next, which had to be there. The what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to memories that you have, times when you know that you made him happier than he could be with anyone else. You don't have to talk about him. I just want you to go and... I would like you to go and get three. Oh, dear. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you something. Do you think that those are something that he could forget? No. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> In therapy, you're going to need to be able to access states of self-worth frequently. And then it's very important to access them in ways that can be verifiable and experienced so that they have a basis uh, for that self-worth in their past, in their present, as well as into the future, that it's something that they're going to be able to do again. For instance, it's not particularly useful for you to build someone's whole self-concept, self-worth, say on the fact that they were the high school quarterback, you know, and now that's not lying in their future. The other piece about self-worth is making it appropriate to the context. So for this context, for Hazel with jealousy, that her self-worth, that her security concerned her ability to have an impact on her husband, a positive impact, a powerful impact on her husband. If it had been someone who um, felt inadequate in learning situations, then the basis of that self-worth would need to be in relationship to that context about intelligence and learning. The next level, next outcome that Leslie was going for with Hazel was to establish that generative sequence. Generative sequence, a generative chain, as you ran her through, is a powerful intervention and one that you use in many different contexts as long as there are states, internal states, that are unpleasant, undesirable, that the person seems to experience often. Right, and, and that, yes. Um, the indicator for using a generative chain is that the state um, has two elements. One, an internal state, an emotional quality, as well as some type of computation. The other indicator to use the generative chain sequence is that it's a theme in their life. So whether it's regrets or anxiety, um, or in this case jealousy, it's something that you can count on comes up often enough that you need to attach the intervention, um, the resources, to the state itself. Because it would be very difficult to attach it to every single stimulus out in the world that caused it. So you attach it to the state itself. Now, I really like the generative sequence. One of the things that it does um, is utilize a presupposition from neuro-linguistic programming, which is that all behaviors are relevant, are useful in some way. And so often I found that people, if they have an unpleasant emotion, they just want it to go away, like a sore throat. They just want it to go away. And that's not useful. It's not ecological. 
that every state, every emotion, has some usefulness, some meaning to it. Regrets will tell you what you could have done. It will point, they will point the way to what to change and make different in the future. In this case, jealousy. Jealousy can be very useful, and which I worked with Hazel throughout for that to be evident to her. Jealousy, that feeling, it's a feeling that goes, that man's very important to me. Okay? And that's a wonderful thing to know.